Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Introduced in the late 1960s, the Lockheed C-5 Galaxy remains the largest military transport aircraft in service to this day. Designed with the goal of carrying larger payloads over longer distances, the C-5 boasts an impressive maximum takeoff weight of 840,000 pounds. Its massive cargo hold is 121 feet long, 19 feet wide, and over 13 feet tall, allowing it to carry up to 36 master pallets, two M1 Abrams battle tanks, and up to three Chinook helicopters. The plane itself is 247 feet long and boasts a wingspan of 222 feet. Even empty, it weighs 380,000 pounds. Of course, such a large and powerful aircraft requires equally powerful engines in order to perform its duty. The secret to the insane amount of power driving the C-5 is the plane's four General Electric F-138-100 turbofan engines. Each of these high-bypass engines is capable of producing 51,000 pounds of thrust, more than three times the power produced by a single F-16 Falcon. The engines themselves are extremely large, measuring around 15 feet long and boasting a diameter of nearly 9 feet. And since these engines operate at such a high level, they need constant maintenance to ensure they function properly. While the men and women of the maintenance divisions assigned to each C-5 are extremely well-trained, most of the important decisions regarding these units are taken at the General Electric factory. General Electric has facilities all around the world, but one of the largest is the Jet Engine Overhaul Shop in Brazil. In a given year, this facility will service around 300 engines from various clients. Each engine built by GE has an operation cycle, which can vary between 2,500 and 15,000 takeoffs and landings. Once it reaches this point, the engine is removed and shipped to the Brazilian facility. Here it is carefully inspected, disassembled, and cleaned. The trained technicians at the factory will evaluate each component and part to look for signs of damage or wear. There are more than 12,000 parts in each engine, which will be evaluated, repaired, and if necessary, replaced. Once the techs are satisfied, the engine will be reassembled and put through a rigorous month-long testing facility. Only upon meeting the highest GE standards will it be shipped back to the customer. Aside from the engines, perhaps one of the most impressive innovations on the C5 is the nose door. Since using a traditional real ramp system can limit the size of the objects that can be loaded into the cargo bay, the Lockheed designers made it so the entire nose section of the C-5 lifts up above the cockpit. This allows cargo to be loaded horizontally, drastically increasing the overall cargo space. 
Sometimes this cargo consists of military vehicles, while other times the C-5 might carry satellite materials, like the SBIRS GO-5. The cockpit of the C-5 Galaxy is located on the aircraft's upper deck. It is large enough to accommodate a crew of two pilots and a flight engineer. Tax pitch all switches. Normal. Blast the sluts. The cockpit has massive windows, providing an excellent view of the surrounding area, which is particularly useful during takeoff and landing. The C-5 Galaxy cockpit features a variety of advanced avionics and flight systems, including a flight management system, digital autopilot, and satellite navigation systems. These systems help pilots to operate the aircraft safely and efficiently in a wide range of conditions. Though the C-5 is over 50 years old, most operational versions have undergone extensive upgrades to ensure the plane remains compatible with modern military requirements. A plane with the size and weight of the C-5 Galaxy requires an exceptional landing gear system to function. Engineers not only provided the plane with five sets of landing gear, but placed the four rear struts near the outside of the fuselage, rather than underneath. This helps maximize stability during takeoff and landing, especially when the plane is loaded to capacity. Each of these four rear sections has three pair of wheels, giving the plane a total of 28 tires, all of which are four feet in diameter. Perhaps most interesting of all is the manner in which the landing gear is deployed. The struts come out of the fuselage sideways, then turn 90 degrees, so the tires face forward. Though this sideways deployment must work perfectly in sequence to avoid malfunction, it was the only way to place the struts so far away from the center of the aircraft. Despite its age, the C-5 Galaxy still undergoes regular testing and capability drills. For instance, the plane is traditionally rarely reversed using its own power. Instead, special trucks and other vehicles are used in order to move the C-5 into hangars or back into a storage space. However, reverse thrust testing has proven that the massive plane can indeed use its engines to move backward. By confirming this capability, the U.S. military can now begin training its C-5 crews on the maneuver, broadening their options in the case of a field emergency. Due to its size and weight, the C-5 Galaxy typically requires a runway with a minimum length of 8,000 feet. In hot and high altitude conditions, or on a wet or icy runway, this can extend up to 11,000 feet. However, the United States military has invested a lot of resources into testing if and how the C-5 might be able to land at shorter or less equipped runways. Mm -hmm. 
such short takeoff and landing capabilities could prove immensely useful when delivering cargo to and from more austere locations. Like all planes, the C-5 Galaxy's range can be influenced by such factors such as payload, cruising altitude, and environmental conditions. The U.S. military estimates the C-5's average range to be 5,524 miles when carrying a payload of 270,000 pounds. However, this range can be extended with in-flight refueling. This is when the C-5 crew meets a tanker while in mid-air. The latter plane then releases a probe that goes directly into the C-5's fuel tank. A C-5 can theoretically fly indefinitely using this technique, but the crew and equipment have limitations that prevent this from being attempted. Nonetheless, even without refueling, a fully fueled C-5 could fly from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the United States to Buenos Aires, Argentina. As impressive as the C-5 Galaxy is, it is far from the only large cargo plane in operation around the world. A good example is the Antonov AN-124. Which is 226 feet long and has a wingspan of 240 feet. First introduced by the Soviet Union in 1986, around 55 of these strategic airlift planes were implemented over 40 years. To this day, it is the largest military transport aircraft still in service. Another example of a very large and unique aircraft was NASA's Super Guppy, designed for transporting oversized cargo like spacecraft components and satellites. The Super Guppy was a highly modified Boeing 377 Stratocruiser airplane. Its unique enlarged fuselage created a bulbous cargo compartment that can hold payloads up to 25 feet in diameter. Though it could only carry around 50,000 pounds at once, the Super Guppy was integral in the space program of the 1960s and 70s. Uh, pressurization is set, altimeters. Uh, Over the years, it has transported such important cargo as the Orion spacecraft, the James Webb Space Telescope, and components for the International Space Station. Perhaps the most unique looking of all is the Airbus Beluga, a modified A300 commercial airliner the Beluga features a modified fuselage with a widened upper section and a large cargo bay door. This extended cargo bay gives the plane a total volume of 1,400 cubic meters. The manufacturer, Airbus, typically uses the Beluga to transport aircraft parts to and from its various facilities. In a nod to the plane's nickname, the latest models have been painted with a smiling whale face on the nose. Because they are so commonplace, it's easy to forget just how complex civilian and military aircraft can be. From the engines to the landing gear and everywhere in between, these vehicles incorporate some of the most advanced technology in the world.
That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.